floor is mine? Yes. Mr. President, Mr. Speaker, it is good to be back with you. It's good to be, it's good to be with all of you again. Um, 15 years now. It's hard to believe, but that uh, this is now my 15th address to the Joint Legislature, and I still get nervous. I speak an awful lot, and I speak to substantial crowds, but I think it's because it's so meaningful to be back home, to be with leaders around our state, and to be reconnecting or, or re-engaging in ways that are positive. So know that my time here with you this morning means a great deal to me. It means a great deal to be with friends. So I'm here to talk about what's going on in Washington, D.C., what's happening here at home, and how they intersect and connect. Before I get into my remarks, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for your service. Uh, we all know that the job is hard. We know that the hours are really long. The, uh, the efforts that you make individually and collectively to take the best ideas and to bring them together. So my, my hope this morning and my encouragement this morning is to, to work together, to find the ways to come together across the aisle, across the chamber, whenever and wherever and with whomever you can. Alaskans expect this, and we know that we can deliver. We know because we've seen it time and time again. My friend Al Adams always did this, and I would thank you. I thank you for honoring him, and I hope that his legacy continues to, to inspire all of us to be better for Alaskans. And uh, I think about Al very fondly. Another friend of ours, certainly a friend of mine, actually my former boss, my first boss when I was a legislative aide here in, in the legislature years ago, Joe Hayes, our former Speaker of the House, has just recently passed. And so it's sad news, uh, sad news for many of us who called him friend and recognized his leadership. As I thank you for, for your efforts and your work, I also want to thank your families because we all know that we are all much better because of the support, the love, and encouragement that we receive from our families. And most of you, most of you uh, do not have your family members here with you. They're, they're back in your districts, but they keep us going. They keep you going when the hearings run late, when the rhetoric is heated, and the sessions seem to go on forever and ever and ever. They are there, and we thank them for their support. So I want to personally give a shout out to all your families. So you know that's leading up to my family report. You can't have, a, you can't have a, an address without the family report, and we're all doing well. Our older son, Nick, is now 26, and we all know what 26 means. You are now off my health insurance. He's finishing up grad school, which means that that 529 plan that we worked so hard to fill, that is now depleted, completely run dry. So it's a good thing he's just about done. Our, our younger son, Matt, is, uh, he's running the family small business up in Anchorage. He has, uh, he's been very anxious to see how the new depreciation schedules and the 179 expensing from the new tax bill is going to impact him and his business. So, you know, mom, what have you done for me lately? This is, we're going to wait and see. Uh, Vern, he's probably not going to like me saying this, but it's true. He has now applied for Medicare. So we're right up there with you. And as for me, some of you are gasping like I'm sharing state secrets. I, uh, I passed a major milestone birthday this year. And I am now eligible for my OFL. Some of you know what that means. I want to thank the state of Alaska for ensuring that uh, I'm going to be able to fish and hunt for a long while. But thank you for that. And Vern and I celebrated our 30th wedding anniversary. So we're doing pretty well. And oh, by the way, yeah. 
That's a good one. So when you think about milestones and anniversaries and good years, and it was a good year for us, we had a good year as a state because we opened up ANWR. Not a bad way, not a bad way to end the year. So here we are in February. As I walked in, the snow was starting to come down. It can be a little bit of a dark and a gloomy time of year. We're all waiting for spring, and oftentimes the pessimism about the weather influences our outlook on our work, and sometimes that can be pretty dismal. You look at the statistics as they relate to our unemployment. You look at the budget shortfalls that you all are facing. So I'd like to take my time this morning and focus on the good and the reason why we have optimism for Alaska's economy. So think about where, where we are right now. We've got new investment in our military, in, in the interior, up, in, uh, up at Clear and, and Isleson and, and Greeley, and I got all my interior delegation nodding their head approvingly. We have our near-term opportunities to refill taps up on the North Slope, significant for us all. We've got great um, excitement, I think, with mining, and whether it is the expansion at Fort Knox, whether it's the opportunities at, at Bocan Mountain, Graphite One, or Donlin, we have, we have real, real potential there. Our tourism industry, our visitor industry is growing strong. Uh, we have a multi-year funding for highways from the FAST Act, giving us that reliability and predictability of, of funding source, which is so important. We have the growing benefits of tax reform for individual Alaskans and our business community. So when you think about all of these as they have been teed up, we've got, we've got glimmers of spring all around us. But there's more that we have to look forward to. Consider some of the other things that we have been focused on. Our passage of the, of the Alaska Mental Health Trust, the land exchange, and, and the opportunity to provide for, for timber industry and, and revenue for mental health. Senator Stedman, you worked with us for a long while on that. Of course, the continued progress that we have on the Alaska LNG line is significant. We have new broadband development and opportunities there. From the perspective of the Coast Guard, we've got deployment of new Coast Guard cutters, which for our coastal communities is going to be significant, not only for, for purposes of the, of the assets themselves, but what they bring to the community. Uh, we're leading the way. The state is leading the way when it comes to innovation of renewable energy microgrids. When you have the eyes of the nation looking at places like Cordova and say, what are you doing up there? That's good to see. We have a two-year budget deal to fund both our military and our critical programs. And of course, we have the ever-growing attention to the Arctic, including the priority and the need for, for icebreaking capacity and icebreakers. So with all of these things in front of us and more, I think we can imagine a pretty good summer ahead. And I think, best of all, our biggest victories that we have seen this past year came from perhaps the hardest place. And that has been our longstanding fight to gain reasonable access to Alaska's lands. And we have seen significant advancements working with this administration. We see the administration's commitment to help Alaska through its efforts to open up much of our National Petroleum Reserve after nearly half of it was closed off. We also see uh, through the administration's approach that they have taken with regards to the new OCS five-year plan, which should reopen our northern Arctic waters to responsible development there. And then, of course, the big victory. The big victory at the very end of last year through the tax reform bill that just so happened to include a second title, a very short second title, but incredibly significant title, which I had the opportunity to author, which opens the 1002 area to responsible energy development. That
37 years. 37 years in the making. We do things by the decades, unfortunately, around here, or so it seems. But that torch was carried by, by Senator Ted Stevens. It was carried by my father, by Congressman Young, by multiple governors, and by countless state legislators. Some are still here in, in the chamber. Many are no longer with us. But it was the ultimate team effort. It was the ultimate team effort. We never gave up. We kept the faith, and we finally succeeded, and now access to the 1002 area is law. It is in law, and that is significant. We also had another significant victory in our fight for reasonable access to our lands, and that is the land exchange between the Department of Interior and the good people of King Cove. And I will turn to my colleague here behind me here. This has been this has been a personal effort for so many of us. I can't wait. I think we're all going to be lining up, but I can't wait to be there to turn the first shovel of dirt on this. And I am so pleased to be able to, to be here today and tell you that we are closer than ever to finally seeing a life-saving road. And I, I commend you all for working with the governor to help fund that. So I think, I think as Alaskans, we can feel that things are starting to turn around for us. We're starting to turn the corner here. But even as we are, are looking forward to the summer and what it might bring, right now, our reality is we are wading through the slush of early spring, and uh, we've got to get through that. We have to recognize that while these gains are substantial, these gains that I've just talked about are good, and in many ways they're historic, but they're still fragile. And they're not guaranteed and they're not permanent at this point. So as jubilant as I am about Anwar and King Cove and so many of the other successes that we have seen over this past year, I also feel obligated as I stand before you to express a note of caution. Because to a certain extent, and I've used, this, I've used this phrase before, but we've reached the end of the beginning, if you will. We've taken some of the hardest steps, but we cannot take for granted what comes next. So I would urge you to consider carefully how your actions and your policies attract investment and foster stability in the face of the constant efforts that we know we receive from outside to undermine any progress that we might wish to achieve. We're already seeing it. We're already facing lawsuits over King Cove, over the Arctic offshore. We will likely see lawsuits and other roadblocks for the 1002 area. And we have to take all of these seriously. So I would ask you this morning that you consider how we can partner together to ensure that Alaskans realize these benefits.